Hello beginner game developers, thank you for joining me. My name is Drew and I'm going to show you how to make a little shoot 'em up It's going to be nice and easy, real simple, fast to get into. So go ahead and download Game Maker Studio 2, start it out its trial if you need to. I think they've removed all limitations and it's just a 30 day free trial and then it expires you have to buy it. But for me personally, I think it's worth it. So we're going to go ahead and say get started, hit new, and then Game Maker Language. We're going to call this one shoot 'em up going to be a little space shooter. This is your integrated designer environment, your IDE. Everything that you need is going to be on this screen. So let's start off by going to options and then main. Make sure your game is running at 60 frames per second. I personally like to go up to preferences and go to the sprite editor and I make sure my sprites are at 16 by 16 but you can put yours at whatever you want. That's just where I like to start. Now we're going to start with the sprites. Hit create sprite. This is gonna be S player. It's 16 by 16. Hit edit image. And I'm gonna to go to the line tool. There's lots of stuff in the sprite editor. We can go over that in detail later. But for now, let's just let's just hit the ground running. I like to have an 8 by 8 grid so that I can see where the middle is. I'm gonna create a triangle. Nice and simple, kind of a throwback to Space War, the first video game ever. Real simple. And then let's start. Let's create a room. Room zero is already made for us, but it's way too big. Way too big. Let's say our width is going to be 480 and our height is going to be 256. It's a nice size because it's pretty similar to old retro gaming consoles, but it's widescreen. When we go to. Okay, so you need to hit. Uh, after that, you go to viewports and cameras, enable viewports, clear viewport background. You want viewport to be visible. So this square is what we see of the room, but obviously the room's not that big. So we need to change the size of the room to 480 by 256. And then when we see the room when we're playing the game, we want it to be 1920 by 1024. So that's four times the size of 480 by 256. So it'll be nice and big, easy to see, real clear. So we need to create an object for our player. We're gonna call it O player. Right is going to be S player. Now you might wonder why are we using this triangle character? It's not very exciting. That's true. It's not. It's not just an homage to Space War. That's kind of a lazy explanation. What it is is called gray boxing, which is used for 3D games because they are literally just gray boxes. But when you start a new game, you want to prototype rapidly to see if it's even fun or not. Because if you start a game and it, you spend months working on it before you finally play it, and it's terrible then you'll have wasted all that time. So you want to make sure your game is as fun as possible, as quickly as possible, to make sure it's worth moving on with. So, that being said, that's why we have a triangle character. Let's go to the step event, and we're going to set up some variables. So hit var, type in var. And, you know, I'm going to increase the size of this, so that if you're watching this on a phone or a tablet, you can actually see what it says, because a lot of tutorials don't do that, and I find it frustrating because I have trouble seeing what it says. So we're going to create up, down, left, right, and shoot for now. And then we're going to create up, down, left, oops, right, and shoot. And I'm hitting tab at the end of those so that these all line up. See how they all line up properly? A little easier to read that way. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and highlight so that these can all type at the same time. Just a little time saving trick. Keyboard check VK underscore. And I'm going to go up here. I'm going to type up, down, down, left, right. And this is going to be a little different. I'm going to do ORD, parentheses, quotes, capital F, close parentheses. Anytime you have a parenthesis or a bracket, you have to close them, and they'll actually highlight in like blue if there is a closing one, or red if there isn't. So make sure that you close all your parentheses and brackets. That's going to be the source of a lot of errors down the road if you don't realize that. Um, ORD F, we're going to go with F instead of anything else because I like having my fingers on the home row keys, ASDF, and so that's just a comfortable place for it to be. 
So these are all the arrow keys on your keyboard and F is going to be on your keyboard and it's going to shoot. We'll learn to shoot next time. For now, we just want to get the ship moving. So we need to set up conditions and statements, which I like to think of as questions and answers. What happens if you hold up? Well, in that case, your Y position is going to decrease by two. What if you hold down? Your Y coordinates will increase by two. If left, same thing, but with X. If right, same thing over there. Now Y is your vertical coordinates and X is your horizontal coordinates. And left goes negative, right goes positive, down goes positive, and up goes negative. That's why up is minus equals two. It means it's every step of the game, of which there's 60 per second, you're decreasing your Y position by two pixels per step. Here you're increasing it by two, here you're decreasing it by two, here you're increasing it by two. So let's go to room zero, add our player in there, and then hit play. And there we go, we have a player that can move around a field. Perfect, there you go. All right, that's it for the first lesson. Hit me back up on the second lesson, and we'll figure out some more about this. Thanks.